Okay, two things I want to talk about. First of all, about my inspiration for today's video. This is a portrait of Jamie French. She has a YouTube channel. She's hilarious. I love her comedy. That's how I found her. She's really, really talented, not just as a comedian, but also as a singer. And well, she does makeup videos and that's basically her main YouTube thing. But I guess the combination with comedy is really her thing, her thing. She's hilarious. I laugh out loud when I watch her videos and then I have to apologize to my husband who's sitting next to me and yeah. And then I explain how hilarious she is and I should stop using that word for now. Enough with the fangirling. Love her. Jamie French. Awesome. Check out her channel if you're interested in beauty or whatever. I mean, for me, it works really well because I love to do exaggerated eye makeup in portraits, like to draw accentuated lashes. That's really fun for me. I haven't really figured out how to do it so that the mascara doesn't look clumpy. Honestly, that's really, really tough for me to figure out. But yeah, that's something that I want to work on in the future. Now on to the more technical part. For this portrait, I was using oil and acrylic paper, which is an obvious choice. And I was asked this more than once actually, why I don't use oil and acrylic paper if watercolor paper, you know, might not be archival with the oil color on top of it and blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, it, it's been on my to-do list for a really long time. And so finally I tried it out. The oil and acrylic paper that I did use is from Canson and it has basically a texture very similar to cold pressed watercolor paper. And what I found is that it actually behaves very similar to watercolor paper for dry brushing. Like I didn't really find much that was different. Layering was the same, erasing felt the same, like all these things. The only thing is that it kind of has a barrier for the oil so it doesn't seep into the paper too much or not as quickly as with the watercolor paper anyway. And so there, if you have very dark areas where you apply a lot of color and therefore a lot of oil, then it kind of sits on top of the paper a little bit more and um, it, then it can get a little bit slippery if you will so that's something that's a little different to the watercolor paper but I don't think that it's a bad thing it's just something that you need to keep in mind especially if you want to I don't know roll up your work immediately that it might be a little bit uh, yeah oily on these spots you don't really have that with watercolor papers at least not the way that I work so that's basically the difference and um I will definitely use this again because this paper is relatively cheap. I will put like a description down below so that you can find it. And the, yeah, relatively cheap works really well. And I mean, if you're worried about your artwork being archival, this might be actually what you're looking for because it's acid-free paper, it is made for oil color, like you don't have to prime it, it specifically says that. So yeah, that might be, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> and yeah, that's all I have to say for today. I hope you can enjoy the rest of the process in the background. Bye!